Well, welcome to our channel, welcome to our solar room. There is one thing that does not get talked about often, and that is how big of a battery bank you need to have to go completely off grid. Now that's gonna ride on several different factors that might be a little bit different for everybody. And we're gonna try to touch on all of those today. We're gonna to touch on our specific situation and our specific system, and then talk about how you need to calculate what you need. Let's get into it. So we did a 12 hour test last night because it was the first night that was below freezing here in East Texas. We had all of our mini splits running in the heat mode. We started that test at 9 p.m. and finished it at 9 a.m. this morning. Our batteries started at 9 p.m. at 100%. And that is because I had switched over to the grid during the daytime in anticipation of doing this test at night. So I flipped back to our solar at 9 p.m. And at that point, I obviously was not getting any solar input into the batteries. So let's talk about our batteries first, and then I'll talk about the loads that we ran last night for that test. Over here is a stack of six batteries, and behind me is a stack of three. These are the EG4 LL batteries. They are lithium iron phosphate batteries, so we can drain them down to 0% if we choose. And they are all 100 amp hour. They're 5,120 watt hours a piece. That gives me a total of 46,080 watt hours for this entire stack or 46.08 kilowatt hours. So some of you who are new to solar are saying, well, what does that mean? Here's a quick example. Say this Instapot draws 1000 watts or one kilowatt while you are using it to cook soup or whatever it is, and you use it for one hour. That is one kilowatt hour used from the batteries. And remember, we started with 46. So now you need to take that knowledge and apply it to all the other loads in your house and how much each thing is using and how long it's using it for. We're gonna talk about the loads that were in our test last night. And then we're gonna talk about some places that you might want to visit, some websites online, that'll help you try to calculate how many batteries that you need. And then we're gonna talk about a very important factor that's hindering us with our battery bank and something I'm gonna be changing very soon. So most of our loads last night were from the heating from our mini splits in three rooms of the house. This main space here, our daughter's bedroom, and our bedroom. If you haven't seen our installation video on how to do one of these, click on the video at the top of the screen. And the only other things that were running in the house last night were the security lights outside, our two freezers, and our two refrigerators. But here's the other unknown draw on the system last night. This is our old electric water heater. Now, the water in here cools off and the elements will kick on at certain times to heat that water back up. We don't know when they kick on. Usually when the water cools off in here on its own and we're not using the hot water in any fixtures in the house, it only takes about 10 minutes to heat everything back up. So that's 5,000 watts for 10 minutes. That's not an insignificant amount of energy, but it shouldn't contribute that much to the total but we also don't know how many times it kicked on last night. And I currently don't have any way to monitor a standalone appliance like that to see how much is drawing. Now for fridges and freezers, you can take the yearly usage for each appliance and then pull an average from it because it's gonna be really hard to take a specific number unless you're using a watt meter like this and really understand how much it's using every single day. Beyond those loads, we only had a heated dog bed on and that really doesn't draw that much. So here are the big numbers. We started at 100%, 46,080 watt hours. We ended the 12 hour cycle overnight with 17,510 watt hours left in the batteries, which was 37.999%. So obviously we used about 62% of our entire battery bank for just that 12 hour period overnight heating the house to only about 72 degrees. And of course, keeping those fridges and freezers going, the dog bed on, and just a few lights. Our house is 1,800 square feet, and now you're getting a picture of how big your battery bank may need to be. Now, batteries are always gonna be the most expensive part of your system, so keep that in mind. Now, I've heard other people say, as many batteries as you can possibly afford, buy them. 
As soon as you get some more dollars, add another battery. And I would say that's probably a wise thing to do. So with those numbers, our system used 2.33 kilowatt hours every hour for that 12 hour period. So determining the size of your battery system is gonna depend on three things. That is determining what your daily energy usage is. And that is going to be specific to you, your appliances, the size of your house, and all of that. So you really need to get down on a piece of paper or a chart and really get that worked out. I did a video recently on managing your energy usage and how important that is if you want to be off grid with solar. A second factor is trying to estimate how long of a time period you are going to be without sun. So obviously at night, but if the next day is cloudy, then if your battery bank isn't big enough, you got a problem. And then a minor factor that plays into this is what is the temperature, the ambient temperature around your batteries? Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Or is it kind of in that sweet spot where they can operate at maximum efficiency? And this will play out differently between lead acid batteries or AGM batteries and lithium iron phosphate batteries. So these EG4 batteries from Signature Solar are one of the most affordable per watt hour on the market. It's hard to come close. I think a couple of other companies have finally started to catch up to these guys. But if you're interested in these, click on the link in the description below. Now calculating days of autonomy is going to be difficult and it's going to depend on where you live. If you have a rainstorm that comes or a cloudy large system, even in my area in Texas, where I get a good amount of sun, you could be out of uh, the opportunity to charge your batteries for maybe even up to a week. If you live in the Pacific Northwest or up in Maine, obviously that's gonna be a lot different. Or even the northern half of the lower peninsula of Michigan, where it is one of the cloudiest areas in the entire country. All right, so I'm gonna send you in three places here. Unbound Solar has a really good battery bank calculator down here. And it's, it's fairly simple, but it's gonna ask you to take your monthly average for kilowatt usage, and you can get that off your power bill if you don't have your system in yet, and calculate your battery size for uh, lithium or lead, ba uh, lead acid batteries. You can see if you have a lead acid battery, you can only discharge it to 50%. So you need to factor that in when buying the batteries. Lithium you can discharge to 100%, but if you want to maintain that battery health and the longevity of the batteries, it's recommended you only discharge to 80%. We'll talk about that again at the end of the video. We're gonna go here to the Alti store, very well known store, they do a great job. They've got a battery bank sizing calculator as well. And then they can actually, oh, check this out. So you can put um, a little bit more in here. You can see the temperature is a factor here and you can put a little bit more information in here. So it helps you calculate maybe a little bit more um, accurately what your battery size, your battery bank size should be. And then we've also got a calculator over here from uh, Solar Panels Venue, and you can find these all over the place. You're gonna have to cross-reference these different things. So you can see over here, the kilowatt hours for the lithium battery size on the Unbound Solar site tells me I need 84 kilowatt hours, but over here on the LT store, they're saying I need 91 kilowatt hours or 91,000 watt hours. So there is a little bit of difference between them. Although this LT store, like I said, it's got more things that have gone into, more information that have gone into the calculation. So I hope that's helping you to paint a picture of just how big your battery bank is going to have to be for you to be completely off the grid. Now, like I said, a big factor is management, but another big factor is how many panels you have. Let me explain. So we have 2,440 watt solar ever panels, and that's 8,800 watts of potential coming in. So calculating for panel efficiency, sun angle at this type of year, time of year, uh, voltage loss, so on and so forth, we are getting at peak probably about 7,000 or seven kilowatts of charging into our batteries. 
Now that's not a ton, especially if you're charging nine batteries and trying to use other loads at the same time. If you're doing your laundry or you are cooking, that's taking all of that power from your solar panels and using it for those loads because we set, had this set for solar battery utility. We don't have utility connected into them. So it goes solar first for your loads, then battery. So there's zero charge uh, charging happening with the batteries if we are using all of our panel power for our loads in the house. Which means what? That other thing I was talking about earlier is I do not have enough panels to charge these quickly enough to be able to charge them up, use some for the loads in the house, and have enough sunlight left in the day to get these to 100%. So it comes down to sizing your whole system properly at the beginning. Now, if you can't afford to do that, like us, then you have to piece it together one piece at a time. We were able to get more batteries, but we didn't get more panels until just recently and I don't have them hooked up yet. So as we head into shorter days here, I'm gonna have less and less battery capacity that I can use at night for the house. So keep adding batteries, keep adding panels. Keep adding batteries, keep adding panels. You need to kind of do them in conjunction with one another. For the inverters, I'm not worried. These two EG4 inverters here are plenty to power our entire house. I don't think I've come close to maxing these things out. I've got 13 kilowatts of inverting power here. And they're charging the batteries at a really good rate. I just don't have enough power coming from my panels to charge it quicker. I really hope I explained that well, and if I didn't, please leave me a question or a comment in the comment section below and I'll be happy to help you out. Now go click on these videos right here, which is our entire playlist about how we installed two different solar systems. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.